So after Toy Story, Pixar was on work to make their next feature film, this time about, well, bugs. But during this time, there was sort of a big race going on? Okay, so there was this big feud between Pixar and newcomer DreamWorks due to DreamWorks Animation making a very similar movie about bugs and starring an ant character. This movie, of course, was DreamWorks' first animated feature film, Ants. So to sum it up quickly, release dates of both films were moved around and it was sort of a race to see which CG animated bug film would release first. Ants premiered first, and while it was successful, A Bug's Life just destroyed it in terms of box office sales. And honestly, that's really the most noteworthy thing about A Bug's Life, because I'm gonna be real here, and I hope I don't get too much hate for this, but before some of the 2010 Pixar movies, A Bug's Life is probably my personal least favorite Pixar movie. Squidward! Okay, let me first state, A Bug's Life is a good movie. I don't hate it at all, it's not a horrible movie by any means, but I just find a lot of it pretty unremarkable. The story is about an ant named Flick who wants to make a difference in the colony, so he sets off to find warrior bugs to fend off against a group of grasshoppers, however shockingly the warrior bugs turn out to be circus bugs, and you can guess what happens next. Yeah, it's so predictable on what happens, and the liar reveal trope is just awful in this. Don't get me wrong, there are still some good stuff in this movie. The voice performances are still pretty great. While Flick isn't one of the best Pixar protagonists, in fact, he's just kind of an okay protagonist, I thought his voice actor did a pretty good job playing him. The voices of Ada and Hopper were also pretty good. In fact, I did think Hopper was a pretty good villain. He's no Syndrome or heck even Randall, but he's a pretty good antagonist. While I don't think the designs are as good as Toy Stories, the animation is a big step up though. There are also a few funny moments, like this one scene where the circus bugs are watching the play was comedy gold. That scene alone might be the best part of the movie. Other than that, it's a good film and all. I still like it, but it's definitely one of Pixar's weaker films. But like Toy Story, it also had a tie-in video game, and this time, we're entering the fifth generation of consoles, so we have our first fully 3D Pixar game. First fully 3D Pixar game? That sounded a lot better in my head. Traveler's Tales is back, and it was published by... Oh wait, it actually was published by a completely different company, depending on the platform. Okay. Okay, so it was released on the PlayStation, and it was published by Sony Computer Entertainment. On PC, it was published by Disney Interactive, though on PC it's labeled as a Bugs Life action game. Yeah, so whenever a Disney game got ported to PC, it usually went by this weird name. It's probably did this because they didn't want to confuse it with the other Disney games on there. And finally, on the Nintendo 64, it was published by Activision. There might have also been plans for a Sega Saturn version, as on Traveler's Tales website, it actually lists it for the Saturn, but it was probably scrapped due to the Saturn being, well, pretty much dead when this game came out. In this video, I'm just going to be sticking to the PS1 and Nintendo 64 versions. Though for the PS1 version, I am going to be using the PS1 Classic on the PS3. I don't know much about the PC version since I've never played it, so I can't really comment on anything about it. But if you've played it, let me know in the comments. I'm actually pretty curious. But yeah, let's see what A Bug's Life the game has to offer. I will say, I really like the cover for this game. It's definitely a lot better than the first Toy Story game. In terms of following the movie, it follows it pretty well. The only thing that's really dropped from the game is the stupid lie reveal trope they had, which I'm kinda glad they didn't have it in the game. Though, here's something I just realized. In the context of the game, did Flick really need to get warrior bugs? Because he's pretty capable of killing the grasshoppers. I mean, in the second stage, he obliterates some of them and even blows up the first boss. They kinda just need Flick, honestly. He could've taken the entire group on his own. But anyways, the cutscenes use the actual clips from the movie, which is actually the first Pixar game to do this. Well, if you're playing the PC and PS1 version. Since the Nintendo 64 is not CD based, it uses cartridges, it's a slideshow instead. 
Honestly though, I kind of prefer the slideshow approach. This is going to apply to a lot of Pixar games later on, but I never really thought using the clips from the movie was that big of a selling point. For one, especially with this game and when we get to Toy Story 2, the clips look pretty awful, and they are dubbed over pretty badly. And also, the clips play at like the most random points of the game that don't really make any sense. Now for this game, the problems aren't as bad here, but when we get to Toy Story 2, it gets pretty noticeable. I guess you can say that maybe the clips were cool back then since, you know, the movies were still in theaters and weren't on VHS yet, but I don't know man, I just never found them that big of a selling point. Honestly though, yeah, I prefer the slideshow approach the N64 one went. Not to mention, it tells the story a lot better in that version. The voice acting is fine, there are a few people that didn't reprise their roles, but it honestly all sounds fine. In terms of environments, the game looks pretty nice on both systems. It's nothing amazing, but for what we have, it looks pretty good for 1998. The models are obviously pretty dated nowadays, but again, for the time, it looks pretty decent. The music is just wholesome though, and we got some great songs in here. Though like with Toy Story 1, the soundtrack is going to sound a little different depending on which version you play. So again, I'll let you be the judge of which sounds better. So yeah, presentation is pretty good. So how does it play? Well, it's a 3D platformer where you have to either get to the end of the stage or find a certain number of items to finish the stage. Flick controls pretty decently overall and the ground pound and jumping feel pretty nice. He can be a little slippery at times, but it's not too bad. The mechanic though that I really like in this game is the root system. Basically, you'll see these seeds across the level. Depending on the color and if you collect a certain amount of these tokens, you can plant seeds which for the most part are used for platforms or they could be used for something to shoot down enemies or give you health. There are also these berries you can use to throw at enemies and if you find the right berries you can obliterate them, especially if you get the gold berry which will kill an enemy forever. I really like these two mechanics, it offers a really cool strategy of how you want to approach a stage. Like maybe instead of spawning a bounce mushroom, you can instead spawn a cannon plant which will bounce you higher. Stuff like that is really cool. So if you remember in Toy Story 1 how brutal it was, well a bug's life is basically the complete opposite of that. It's really easy. In fact, it's a little too easy at points. Like, some of these levels literally only take 30 seconds to finish, and there are only around 10 stages in the entire game, not counting boss stages. Yeah, this game is really short. And honestly, for the most part, most of the levels were hit or miss. There are some really cool levels, like I really like the second to last stage where you have no strong berries to kill the grasshoppers, and you have to rely on roots to actually progress through the stage. But some of these stages I just wasn't a big fan of. Like the add a flying stage was very clunky and I didn't really like the assembling the bird level. It just was way too confusing. There are also a ton of collectibles you can collect that can unlock movie clips. But again, I never really thought the movie clips were that great in reward so I didn't really go for the collectibles. One thing though I'm not a fan of is the whole live system. So if you get a game over and lose all your lives, you go back to a previous save, but it doesn't give you back the 5 lives, so if you last saved and you only have like 1 life left, then you're screwed, which is dumb. Though to be fair, because of how easy this game is, you probably won't find it that big of an issue, but still, it's so dumb that they would have this. The bosses are ridiculously easy for the most part. 
The only boss I thought was really challenging was the final boss with Hopper. It was actually a pretty decent final boss. But yeah, most of the bosses are just hit him really fast with a strong berry and you win. There's no real strategy to any of them. In terms of version differences, aside from the clips and the music, there are also a lot of texture differences between the two, and the N64 version has this weird challenge mode thing? I don't know, I didn't really spend much time with that. Now, comparing both versions, I'd say the PS1 version is the superior one. I think it looks nicer, I like the CD quality music, and I feel it controls a little better. But the N64 version is still solid. Though weirdly, the N64 version requires a controller pack to save. A lot of N64 games didn't need a controller pack. Maybe it was a money concern, but it's just weird that you can't just save to the cartridge. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal since controller packs are pretty cheap online. But yeah, in case you were thinking of getting the N64 version, just remember to get a controller pack and you're all set. So yeah, that's the game. It's a pretty simple game, but I liked it fine. It wasn't amazing by any means. I think the game is way too short and the life system is just awful, but I overall like the game. And this is coming from someone who just thinks the movie is just good, nothing that spectacular. While this game is a little easy at points, I think it's a much better game to get into than Toy Story 1 was, especially for kids. They would have a much easier time with this. If you're a big fan of the movie, then definitely check this game out. I think it's pretty decent for what it is. And the game doesn't even go for that much online, and it's on the PS3 store, so it's pretty accessible. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you all enjoyed this review. I know it wasn't that long, but hey, what can I say? It was a pretty simple game. Well, see you all in the next game in this marathon as we take a look at Toy Story 2. Oh man, I'm so excited for this one in particular. Anyways, have an amazing day everyone, and take care! Bye!